Hello, my name is Liz Slee. I am Head of Media for Enterprise Nation. Today, I'm going to speak to you about public relations, how to get coverage. The first thing you need to think about is what is in your PR toolkit. So uh, that is a press release or some information that's written about your um, story. Journalist hit list, you need to know who you want to get in touch with and have their contact details. Pitching a story, that's something you need to get used to doing. Uh, that's around um, a sort of combination of sending out your story via email and then picking up the phone often and speaking to journalists about what you've just sent them and that's about developing relationships. Uh, adding an expert opinion, once you've had a bit of coverage, you can start to sort of build uh, a reputation and a relationship with journalists and offer your own expert opinion. Speaker opportunities, that's another form of PR really and uh, it's great to get your brand out there and to meet people who might be able to pass on your message. Awards are great, uh, that means uh, you can, when you're in writing your press release, you can say that you're award winning. It gives you recognition, but it's not essential. Why is it important to develop your newsworthy angle? Well, just looking at a couple of uh, cuttings here, uh, Proper Corn um, first kind of got into the press because they started to obviously had a great product, um, they were great people, but actually, um, one of the things that kind of hit the headlines first of all was because they made it in a cement mixer. I'm not suggesting that you make a, think your product in a cement mixer, but that's just an idea about you know how to get some easy coverage. Uh, the other um, story that I've included here is the York Yorkshire firm launches world's first spider-proof garden shed. Effectively, it's just a garden shed, and which would be very very little interest to journalists. Uh, usually. So that's an example of how to sort of turn your brand into something that journalists might want to think about. Get some great images. I cannot tell you, every good press release deserves a good image and um, quite often I have found that journalists or will use a story uh, based on how good the uh, image is. Sometimes uh, it works, you know, even if your story is not brilliant. <laughs> so uh, just have a look at some of these stories. They are amazing images and uh, as a journalist, I would be very interested in um, using a story in order to be able to get that on my page. So think about that. It is worth the investment, absolutely. Get your news out there. Email. Uh, journalists are busy. Uh, they're also wordsmiths, which means they like to look at words and see how um, just naturally they play on a page. So uh, email is always um, important. So email your press release and copy and paste it into uh, an email and always include a short pitch, probably no more than two paragraphs highlighting the best angle. Uh, when you write to them, don't ever in the subject line put something like press release. Um, that's the least interesting thing and the, possibly the worst thing that you can do to, to send to a journalist. What about feature idea or you can even, once you've decided on the headline for your uh, press release, you might even just use that. Never send a press release as an attachment. Journalists are time poor. Um, they'll click on a, an image potentially, but they're not gonna click on um, something like um, an attachment, which is just words, because that's just a waste of time. It also sort of demonstrates that you fundamentally misunderstand uh, journalism. The other thing um, I would say is that uh, if you have something like a survey or something that you that needs a little bit of thought, you might consider putting an embargo on, which means you might put it out a couple of days before you want them to use it, um, so to coincide with the launch. Um, and then that gives them a little bit of time to sort of think about um, whether and how they might use it and get their own angle. Leave, once you've sent your email, leave it for half an hour or, or, or longer and then give them a call. Um, develop a taste for news. It's important when you start speaking to journalists that you understand news. So um, set up Google News Alerts uh, for your competitors. Um, that is a really good way of sort of working out uh, where you should be. If you, you will know who your competitors are. Um, find out how much kind of coverage they're getting, where they're getting covered, uh, and that might be a useful uh, way for you to work out where you might need to go. Identify journalists uh, and follow them on Twitter, always good, because you can see what they're doing and what they're thinking and what they're covering. 
follow what they write and read it. Um, it's important that you know what they cover and that you read and understand what they do. You can usually find an email on, on journalist Twitter accounts um, or sometimes you can go on the website and often you can work it out. Set up Google News Alerts for keywords for your industry. So you need to sort of have a handle on what the industry um, that you're working in is talking about. Once you've got some coverage, uh, tell the world uh, about it, use your social media channels, use it as a link um, and make sure that you make the most of it because otherwise that's just one day, one little cutting. Add the media uh, logo to your website as seen in, that's important, People, it gives people trust in you. Use the logo perhaps on your product information potentially and if you are looking to um, get investment um, it's a useful thing. Ju uh, people who invest in companies are always looking to see um, how newsworthy they are because obviously PR is a great way to get out there. Thank you very much for that and thank you for listening and good luck with it.